What was that? That was you, Ken. It was your fork scraping your plate. My what? Your fork scraping your plate. You're fading out again, Glenn. That wasn't me, Ken. That was Chris. I can make out voices now. Just a little here and there. I think I can have another cigarette. No! No cigarettes! I still can't get over it. I find the entire story so hard to believe. You find the story hard to believe. That's because we acted our asses off to keep the truth from you. All right. Myra's gone. Right. The servants are gone. Right. Charlie shoots himself in the earlobe. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Right! Why didn't I see it? People running up and down stairs. Nobody answering the door. Cans of shaving cream exploding. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm on the staff at Bellevue Hospital. How can I believe such a stupid story? You. You never let on. Listen, I was so desperate for a cigarette, I went into Charlie's bathroom to try to light up a Q-tip. Don't you have any soap in the towel? <laughs> yes, I only smoked half. Something's wrong with Ken. Maybe he's still hungry. You want seconds, Ken? No, 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 no. I think he wants to say something. Be quiet a minute, everyone. Now, what is it, Ken? I'm sorry, but I have to do this. The pressure is killing me. Look, Myra isn't here. The servants aren't here. Charlie's upstairs and he shot up in the earlobe. Maybe it was attempted suicide. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I just don't care anymore. It's all right, Ken. We know Lenny told us. Lenny? Glenn? No, no, no. no. Glenn? No, we know because Lenny told us. Lenny! <laughs> Lenny told us! I wish you were deaf again! Is it true, Lenny? Did you tell them? Uh, finish your goddamn dinner and leave us alone, Lenny. Come on, Lenny. Take it easy on him. He's been under a big strain. And I haven't. I was acting my goddamn head off that Myra was up there. I had actual conversations with her up there. I even did her voice in case anybody was listening. Was that you? You could have fooled me. I did. <laughs> That's right. You did. So, you weren't really watching Hitler on PBS? No, no. We stopped everything to watch the rise and fall of Adolf Hitler. I don't believe you, Pete. Sounded so real, I believe it. What about you, Mrs. Cooper? Uh, what's her name? Cassie. What about you, Cassie? Did you think something strange was going on? Yes, for about six months now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What does she mean? <laughs> you have to forgive her. She's still upset about losing her crystal. We could call a plumber. They get everything out. Wedding rings, car keys. I went to an aunt who lost her dentures down the toilet, and they got them out. And she wore them? Well, obviously, you clean them. They could be blessed by the Pope. I wouldn't put them in my mouth again. Unless you're into crystals, you wouldn't understand. Apparently, they have very special properties. You have to clean them in clear spring water. They must be kept in direct sunlight. Cassie scrubs them every night with a soft, wet toothbrush. You don't dry them with a towel. You pat them with a sort of leathery cloth. They really are very delicate. Do you have them enrolled in a good school yet? Oh, come on, Claire! If the crystals work for her. If they give her a sense of comfort and pleasure, then what's wrong with it? You don't have to defend me, Ernie. Crystals will be here millions of years after the Earth is gone. Well, if the Earth is gone, don't the crystals go with it? Well, they don't. You know, I don't know if this will help Ernie, but there's a big crystal chandelier in the dining room. Should I mention it to her? Thanks, Chris, but I don't think so. Best leave her alone now. I'm not dead, you know. I can't hear. Maybe Ken can't. But I can. I can unscrew the toilet myself. I've done it before. I don't think it's the time or the place to fix toilets, sugar. Yeah, maybe another time, another place. Uh, well, bleeding arm and all cookie, that was one hell of a meal. My hey. hat's off to you. Yeah. Obviously, no. The duck is good. Doesn't anybody? Doesn't anybody? Everybody, what? 
What? Can, doesn't anybody, what? <laughs> doesn't anybody want to go upstairs and see if Charlie is still alive? It's been awfully quiet up there, hasn't it? How would you know? What? <laughs> he's right, my God, he's right. We've all been so busy eating and explaining to each other that we forgot all about Charlie. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. All right, all right, I'll go up and settle this now. Wait, wait. We're all in a precarious situation here. Not only Charlie, but a lot of people's futures depend on how we deal with this issue. Meaning you? Well, no. Cassie and I were the last ones to arrive. We just heard about it. We're hardly involved. And Ernie and I were clicking the whole time. Nobody told us. Sorry. Well, I wanted to call the police. Now, Ken wouldn't let me call the police. Claire, didn't I want to call the police? Lenny wanted to call the police. So what are you saying? That it's Ken's responsibility? He takes the rep for this? No! No! no, 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 no. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. No. Uh, what we're saying is, uh, if it comes down to it, He's the most logical, that's all. I can't believe this. Ken almost went deaf trying to protect Charlie and everybody else here. I expected a little bit more from his friends. My God, what a bunch of wimps! Have you heard any of this, Ken? Well, answer her, Glenn. Have you? God, oh my God! What is it? I lost my earrings! My grandmother's earrings! Where did you lose them? Right here! That's okay, neither Charlie and Myra. <laughs> That's funny, Lenny. That's truly funny. I can never think of anything funny. How do you do that? Uh, uh well, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, uh can, can I get up and get you a glass of wine? Or, uh, Why? Do I look like I need one? Who's she getting back at, Glenn? You or me? Okay, Cassie, cut it out. What do you mean, sweetheart? You know what I mean. Push your hair back up and sit in a chair. What's he talking about, Lenny? Excuse me, everyone. I'm going up to get Charlie's gun. <laughs> oh, Cassie. We're all your friends here. Ah, uh, what do you say? <laughs> what, do you, what do you say you and I go out on the Sarah's and have a nice, quiet song? You do, and you'll have a back worse than mine. <laughs> Oh. oh my goodness, this is really incredible because the exact same thing happened to Glenn and me last week at the cocktail party for the Democratic Fundraising Committee. There was the nicest woman there, very attractive, very fun, very sweet. <laughs>
Okay, Cassie, I think we're going. <coughs> Excuse me, I must have eaten too quickly. That was not what you want, kid. Not you. I'll get it, I'll get it. Excuse me. Hello. Charlie, are you all right? Molly! Who the hell is Molly? Charlie! Charlie, not Molly! Yes, Charlie. Yeah, we're all here. Gwen, Gwen, Ken, Ernie, Claire, Chris, Cassie, and Cookie. Isn't that odd that all the women's names begin with C? That's right! Except for Myra. Her middle name is Clara. And all the men's names are the same. Gwen, Gwen, and Ken! That's right! Except for Ernie and Charlie. Charlie begins with a C. What a disaster! Sir Page Sick, let him talk on the phone! Shh. Well, yes, Charlie, I understand. No, no, it's, it's perfectly all right. You do what you have to do. We'll be down here. Bye. He, uh, he needs more time to think. More time to drink? Well, he shouldn't drink with Valium. Think, think, not drink! <laughs> Children. Look, 
I told him I wouldn't tell anyone about the gunshot. And then you went ahead and told everyone. No, no, I only told you and Lenny. Lenny then told everyone. But you were deaf then. You didn't hear me telling everyone. And then you went ahead and told everyone after Lenny told everyone. Go fast again. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, as long as Charlie doesn't think the rest of you know, why tell him now? I see your point, but we've got to keep up the subterfuge. If we confront him now with everyone knowing about the gunshots, he could go to pieces. So, until he tells us his own story himself, we've got to pretend that we don't know anything. Right. Okay. I should be the one who goes up to him. I tell him that everyone is here. And then he asks me, did you tell, does everyone know what's happened? You say no. Right. I say no. Right. Okay. Then Charlie asked me, well, if I'm not down there, Myra's not down there, and the servants aren't down there, what did you tell them? Something's wrong with Kathy. Whoops. Whoops? Well, what, what's whoops? She threw up in the car? She ate Glenn his nose bleeding. Tell me when he hits the back. I'd love to watch that. Oh, would you all please be quiet? I can't hear myself think. Now, what was I saying? You said, I should be the one who goes up. I tell Charlie that everyone's here. And then he asked, well, does everyone here know what's happened? Ernie said, you say no. You said, I say no. And then Charlie asked, well, if I'm not down there, and I was not down there. Oh, right, right, oh, right, oh, right. All right, I've got it. I've got it. Here's an idea. Here's what we do. Charlie's going to want to know what Ken told us. Ken tells Charlie that he told us that Charlie had a large, benign wart removed from his ear this morning. <laughs> but he's OK. Then suddenly, Myra's mother, she broke her hip, and Myra uh, had to take her to the hospital. And Myra's going to stay there the night. The help uh, assumed the party was off, so they left the food and went home. We all got here, we understood, and we decided to cook the dinner ourselves. That's the story. I wouldn't believe the uh, mother breaking her hip part. OK. Why not? She died six years ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then, her father broke his hip. It's not that her father lives in California. Does she have any relatives in this city? She has a cousin, Florence. There you go. It's that simple. Cousin Florence broke her hip. Florence is married. Why didn't her husband take her? Then Myra broke her hip. The neighbors could have taken her. <laughs> if he only had a wart removed, Charlie could have taken her. Mm. Can't you think of something else? I did. I thought of the mother, the father, the cousin, the wart, and the hip. Nothing satisfies you, Ray The man is in shock, mental language, and emotional despair. Logic doesn't mean shit to him right now. Drunk. Scared, guilty, lying, off-handed, perplexed, deceitful, ominous, anonymous. This isn't Scrabble, for God's sake! <laughs> oh, give me the phone. She didn't ask for you. She didn't ask for you either. I know what Myra's voice sounds like. Give me the phone. <laughs> Hello? Uh, no, this is Glenn's friend, Len. No, uh, Ken is getting Len. Uh, you sound awfully familiar. Do I know you? I see. Hold on, please. I don't think it's her. Well, who does it sound like? Meryl Streep. Well, 
Meryl Street? Why would Meryl Street call here? Well, I didn't say it was Meryl Street, but but you know how she sounds in the movies? Like she always does the character perfectly, but it's not really her. That's how she sounded. Like she thought Meryl Street? No, we're playing Trivial Pursuit! <laughs> this is not a game show! I don't believe this! Ken, would you please go get Glenn? Give me the phone. Yeah, somebody went to get Glenn. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's great. That's just great! She hung up. She must have gotten suspicious. Shh, quiet! I hear something. I bet it's a Concorde landing in London. No, it's a car coming up the driveway. Well, maybe it's Myra. Maybe it's Harry and Joan from Venezuela. Oh, we got trouble. Oh, God, if we got trouble. What is it? The police. It's a police car. Oh, great. Here we go. I told you. I told you we should have called the police. Now, look what happened. The police came. Well, who could have called the police? Maybe it was Myra. Maybe it was Charlie. Maybe it was Cassie. You were arguing with her, weren't you? Did she use the phone in my car? Not to call. She hit me with it. She broke my phone? My new phone in my new car? All right, everybody calm down. We've got to figure out what to tell them when they come in. They're trying to talk to Cassie. She won't roll down the windows. My windows? They're going to bust my windows? I'm going to take my car home in an envelope. Why did you leave her out there in the car? She's in no condition to answer police questions. Well, she's in good enough condition to smash my nose. See that. God damn, I got blood on my shirt. And you're running for the state senate? I wouldn't let you run for Chinese food. What's wrong with you people? I've got a six-year-old child at home who behaves better than we do. Fine, then get him over here. Tell him to talk to the police. Oh, take it easy, Lynn. She's been doing her share. She's the one who called Dr. Dudley. Everybody called Dr. Dudley. He's in the Yellow Pages in China. Well, maybe Dudley called the police. It's the phone again. <laughs> He's right. He guessed it was a phone twice in a row. This genius is going to save our lives. <laughs> Same woman who called before. What same woman? She wouldn't say. Maybe it was Myra, maybe it was Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep? Yeah. You know how she sounds in the movies? Like she always does the character perfectly, but it's not really her? That's how this person sounded. We got two policemen coming in. She's giving us a resume of the party. Oh, oh, they're walking over. No. Look, they're on their way over. Oh, hi. How are you? No, it's not a cold. It's a telephone injury. All right. The thing we can't let them do is see Charlie. We can't let him downstairs or them upstairs. I tried talking to Cassie, but she's very upset. All right, above all, no false statements. We must keep within the law. This, above all, agreed? Yay, to thine own self be true. We're in the hearts of better men. Are you crazy? They're outside the door! Of course I know what you're talking to her, but I can't get her out of the car. Look, they're going to ask about the gunshots. What do we tell them about the gunshots? Can I call you back in 15 minutes? Are you still at that 914 number? Kill it. Somebody kill it. Choke him with the telephone wire. I'm very serious about this, but I'm not going to be able to hold my bladder. All right, I've got it. Here's what we tell them. We tell them we didn't hear any gunshots. You mean lie to them? What happened to this above all? Well, it's obviously not going to work tonight. Maybe some other time. If you let me go to the bathroom, I promise I'll come back. Listen, I know you're a good friend, and I thank you for all your wonderful support. Leave him here. Let's run for our lives and leave that schmuck for the cops. <laughs> I can't talk to you. I'll tell you that later. Goodbye. All right, what's going on? Well, about six weeks ago, we got an invitation to this party. Oh, stop it, Lenny! <laughs> All right, think, everybody, think! Why didn't we hear the gunshots? We're all deaf people. We need not to be. That's why we didn't hear the doorbell. Now you know why they call her cookie. I got it! <laughs> We were all upstairs watching the Hitler program. The cannons were bombing Berlin, and it was so loud we couldn't hear anything else. No, that's a good idea. There was no Hitler program! We made the whole thing up to fool this jackass. Hey, listen, I've had just about enough for you, Lenny. <laughs> Look, we've got to let them in. Claire, open the door. I can't. I'm in charge of the music. The music, that's it! What is? Uh, the, the music was on. And we were all dancing. That's why we didn't hear the gunshots. Claire, put on the music. Wait! Don't turn it on yet. 
There's one last thing to do. What? Somebody has to be Charlie. Just in case. Just in case what? Just in case the police want to speak to Charlie. Ken is right. Charlie's in no condition to tell them the real story. Well, of course not, because no one's heard the real story yet. Exactly. But we have to be sure that whatever story the police hear is going to be one that's not going to get us all into trouble. I never saw a sinking ship empty so fast. I agree. Ken is absolutely right. Now, one of you three guys has to be Charlie. What? What did you move to France? Well, let's be honest, I didn't even hear the gunshots. Bang, bang, you bastard! <laughs> Yes, it is, dear, but shh, not if you're doing well. Can you believe we actually married these men? This is a major felony we're talking about. You want to spend 30 years in a maximum security prison wearing a tuxedo? All right, Glenn, we're all this together. And here's how we do it. Come on. Come on up. All right. You stick out two fingers or one finger? If three guys are the same and one is different, that guy is Charlie. Are we ready? Who made you, Don Corleo? Do you have a better idea? Yeah. Let the women wrestle for it. <laughs> all right, well, let's just get it over for Pete's sakes. All right, all right, okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three! Ah, no good, no good. We got two and two. All right, we'll have to go again. All right, ready? One, two, three! Ah, oh, no, it's saved! No good. All right, let's go quick. Ready? One, two, three! Aha! Ready! <laughs> I had two stuck together. I got duck grease on my fingers. It was, it was one finger lining. It was two. I still got it. One finger was one lining. One, I still got <laughs> And that man graduated from John Hopkins. All right, go on upstairs and don't come down unless we call you. No, no, I'm anxious to come as Charlie. Then he'll be back soon. Uh, 
I don't think so. It's a dachshund. They take very small steps. <laughs> He's a horrible officer. He came back. Well, uh, could I possibly see Mr. Brock for a moment? Well, unfortunately, this is a very bad time. As you can see, we've been celebrating a party. Yes, I've uh, noticed. What seems to be the occasion? The 10th wedding anniversary of Charlie and Myra Brock. Well, uh, I wouldn't take long. I just need a minute at this time. Unfortunately, Mr. Brock is sleeping. <laughs> sleeping? In the middle of his anniversary party? <laughs> uh, yes, he was feeling rather depressed. He took a couple of sleeping pills. Well, um, can I speak to Mrs. Brock? Mrs. Brock is not here. She's not? That's why Mr. Brock is depressed. <laughs> Where is she? Da, 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 da. Her father broke his hip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she had to take him to the hospital. In the middle of our anniversary party. Couldn't someone uh, else have taken him to the hospital? Well, you see, your father lives in California. <laughs> it has to do with cousins and warts and hips. It's very complicated. Sure. You, sir. Something wrong with your eye? Me? Uh, yes. Um, I put in some eye drops tonight, and the cat fell off. Most of the bottom went in. May I have your name, sir? My name? Yes, sir. You mean, my name? Yes, sir. Is there a problem with giving me your name? Well, no. It's just that I can't see you very well. That's all. You don't have to see the toxin. The drops didn't go in your mouth, did they? Look, officer! I feel you're being unnecessarily abusive to these people. If you're going to ask any more questions, could you please tell us what this is all about? All right. I will. Can you tell me who owns a BMW car, Doug? That's my husband's car. And, uh, what is his name? You don't have to answer that, Claire. His name is Len. Leonard Gans. And, uh, where is Miss Gans? I object! Look, I ain't a judge. This ain't a court. I don't have a gavel. I just want to know where the man is. Look, you still haven't told us what this is all about. So we're still not telling you where Mr. Gans is. Don't know why I always have so much trouble in this neighborhood. All right. At approximately 8.15 tonight, an auto accident occurred at the intersection of uh, 12th and Danver. A brand new red 1994 Porsche convertible smashed into the side of a brand new BMW sedan. Now, we know it wasn't the BMW's fault because the Porsche was a stolen car. Stolen at 8.15 tonight, right off the dealer's lot. The man and the Porsche got away. Now, do you know who that brand new Porsche belonged to? How would I know? <laughs> it belonged to Deputy Mayor Charles M. Brock. Purchased tonight as a gift from his wife, Myra. A surprise wedding anniversary present. Surprise hardly says it. Aha! Uh -huh! So you're here to investigate the car accident. That's right. Now, if uh, Mr. Gantz is here, I'd uh, like to speak to him. If not, the police department would like to know where he is. Do you think you could step outside for just one moment, officer? <laughs> Why? Mrs. Gantz is my client. I would like to consult with her before any further questioning. It's within my rights. All right, one minute, but that's all you get. All right, we don't have much time. One of us has to be Lenny. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Look, the man doesn't even know about the gunshots. He just wants to ask Lenny about the car accident. But Lenny can't be Lenny because Lenny has to be Charlie just in case the cop wants to ask him about the Porsche. And Charlie can't be Charlie because Charlie's got a bullet hole in his ear. 
Do you understand him in real life? We don't actually talk that much. <laughs> All right, come on, we have the truth again. Now leave me alone with your stupid game. Look, I know it's stupid, but we need a Lenny. Never mind, the girls will do it. Come on, girls, odd woman's husband is Lenny. My husband is Lenny! No, Lenny is Charlie. You're playing for Gil Glenn. Get in a circle. I don't know how to play this game. Just put out your fingers. We'll do the counting. Are ready? Odd finger loses. One, two, three. No, no, no! Your fingers, Cookie! Open your fist! I don't want to lose my earring! Just one or two fingers, okay? Let's try it again. One, two, three. That's me! Shit! Sorry, kid. All right, that's okay. All right, I'm Lenny. Ernie, open the door. Sure, Lenny. <laughs> now? Yeah. Now. Glad to see you're not dancing again. <laughs> All right. Now, where is Mr. Leonard Gant? He's right here in this room, officer. I am Leonard Gant. You are? Yes, I am. How come it took you a whole minute to think of your name? <laughs> Never rush your answers. Harvard Law School. Never trust a man who doesn't know if he's here or not. Police Academy. And who are you, ma'am? Me? I'm his wife. Uh, his, his wife's friend, her, Mrs. Gant. You very alone, ma'am? No, I'm with my husband, Ken Gordon. <laughs> and, uh, where is he? He must have gone home early. Not much of a party, is it? It's had its ups and downs. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gantz, tell us about the accident in full and complete detail. Do you think you can step outside for just one more moment? I ain't going no place, nowhere, no time. This is it. This is where I live until I get what I came for, even if my whole family has to move in. <laughs> What's that? 1047. Pardon me. Over. Check. Got it. Hold it. Red 1994. Porsche convertible. Located at 5th and Market in Perry Town. Suspect apprehended. They said call it a night. <laughs>
You got 2020 here, Mr. Cooper? Blood on your shirt, Len? Yes, I cut myself with a fork during dinner. <laughs> So 
something now that's not really part of my official capacity. But I don't believe one goddamn thing I've heard in this house tonight. I believe there were gunshots here tonight. And I believe someone or everyone is uh, covering up something. A man gets hit in the nose. Another man stabs himself with a fork. <laughs> Someone's BMW gets smashed up. The host takes a short-legged dog for a walk. <laughs> and then goes to sleep. <laughs> the hostess takes her father to a hospital in California <laughs> with a broken hip. <laughs> and Nobody hears two gunshots because everybody's busy dancing, including a woman named Cookie, who's been cooking all night, who can't stand or walk. You people have to deal with me. I'm a real cop, you understand? Not somebody named Elmer, your kids watch on the Disney Channel. Now, I'd like to see Mr. Charlie Brock and uh, find out what the hell's going on in here, including the possibility of him having two bullet holes in him. Now, I'll uh, give you five seconds to get him down here, or I'll take two seconds and go up and find him myself. Don't mess with me now. I'm so close to promotion, I can smell it. And I'm not going to screw it up with this case. Now. Do I start counting or do I start climbing steps? It's up to you. Right, wait, can you just wait, okay, okay, wait, just wait. Okay, wait. 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 Ernie, Ken, I mean like, I think, I think it's about time you call Charlie and ask him to come down, don't you? Da, 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 da. Definitely. Absolutely. Oh, Ernie. Me? Hello, Charlie. We're ready for you now. Are you ready for us? Uh, relax, relax, Charlie. That's just an hysteric nerve reaction. What's wrong? Uh, he thinks he went temporarily blind. No, Charlie. Just put some ice on it and come down. There's some policemen here who want to ask you some questions. Why? Cause you'll cut out one finger, that's why. <laughs> right, okay. Hey, he's fine. He's on his way down right now. The truth is, officer, Miss, Mr. Brock is a dear friend of ours. That's why we're all trying to protect him. But we know we'd all be in jeopardy if we, jeopardy if we hold back the truth from you. There were two gunshots here tonight. I personally did not hear them, but I share equal blame with those who did hear the gunshots, but didn't come forth with that information, despite the fact that I didn't hear them. Glenn, would you stop helping so much? Nevertheless, Mr. Brock is willing to give us the full and complete story, the details of which none of us has heard yet, about the missing help, about the disappearance of his wife, Myra, and about the two gunshots. Which I didn't hear. Oh, God, I think I'm getting another spasm in my back. Oh, who gives a shit? <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Uh, feeling all right, Charlie? Take this down, Glenn. Sonny, let's see. Uh, 
All right, Mr. Brock. Tell us from the beginning exactly what happened in this house tonight. Does anyone want lemon tarts? Oh, yes, a tart would be wonderful. Not now, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. Um, well, let, let, let's see. Um, the story, as it happened, well, as I remember it, well, as, as I'm telling it, here goes. At exactly six o'clock tonight, I came home from work. My wife, Myra, was in her dressing room getting dressed for the party. I, I got a bottle of champagne from the refrigerator and I headed upstairs. Rosita, our Spanish cook, was in the kitchen with Romona, her Spanish sister, and Romero, her Spanish son. They were preparing an Italian dinner. Well, we, uh, they were waiting for Myra to tell them when to start the dinner. Now, as I climbed the stairs, I said to myself, it's my 10th wedding anniversary, and I can't believe I still love my wife so much. Well, Myra was putting on the perfume I bought her for Christmas. I purposely buy it because it drives me crazy. Well, I, I tapped on her door. Tap, tap, tap. She opens it. I hand her a glass of champagne, and I make a toast. To the most beautiful wife a man ever had for 10 years. She toasts to the best man in the best 10 years a beautiful wife ever had. We drink, we kiss, we toast again. To the loveliest skin on the loveliest body that has never aged a day in 10 wonderful years. <laughs> she toasts to the gentlest hands that ever stroked the loveliest skin that never has aged in 10 wonderful years. We drink, we kiss, we toast. We drink, we kiss, we toast. By seven o'clock, the bottle is finished, my wife is sloshed, and I'm completely toasted. <laughs> and then I smell the perfume. The perfume I could never resist. I loved her in that moment with as much passion and ardor as the night when we were first newlyweds. And I tell you this, not with embarrassment, but, but with pride and joy for a love that grows stronger and more lasting as each new day passes. When we lay there, spent, naked in each other's arms, <laughs> complete in our happiness. It's now eight o'clock and outside it's grown dark. Suddenly, a gentle knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> the door opens and a strange young man looks down at us with a knife in his hands. Myra screams. I jump up and run for the gun in my drawer. Myra shields herself with a towel. I rush back in with a pistol and ready to save my wife's life. The strange young man says in Spanish, Yo quito se dada enchilada por queso en quito minuto. But, but I don't speak Spanish, and I never saw Rosita's son Romero before, and I didn't know the knife was to cut up the salad, and he was asking should they heat up the dinner now. So I aim my gun at him. Myra screams and pulls my arm. The gun goes off and shoots me in the earlobe. Well, Rosita's son Romero, <laughs> Rosita's son Romero runs downstairs and tells Rosita and Ramona, uh, Mama Seta, mira que paso el hombre abajo allá, el hombre que loco que bang, bang. The crazy man took a shot at him. So, so Rosita, Ramona, and Romero leave in a huff. My earlobe is bleeding all over Myra's new dress. Suddenly, we hear a car pulling up. It's the first guest. Myra runs downstairs to stop Rosita, Ramona, and Romero. Otherwise, we'll have no dinner. But they drive off in their Alfa Romeo. Well, Myra runs downstairs to the basement, where we keep the cedar chest. She's looking for the dress she wore last year for, for bonds for Israel. Well, she can't find the light. She trips over the stairs and passes out in the dark. Well, I come downstairs, and I notice the basement door is open. And I'm afraid the strange-looking kid is coming back. So I lock the basement door, not knowing that Myra's still down there. Well, I have to run upstairs because, well, my earlobe is killing me from the hole in it. But it's dark, and I, and I see Rosita, Ramona, and Romero driving away. I think they're stealing my beautiful Mercedes, so I take another shot at them. Well, I go to take the aspirin. The blood on my fingers gets in my eyes, and by mistake, I take four Valium instead. Yeah, but, but, but suddenly I can't talk from the Valium, and I hear the guests coming downstairs, and I want to tell them to, to look for Myra. But suddenly I can't talk from the Valium, of course, so I start to write a note explaining what happened. But, but the note looks like gibberish, and I'm afraid they'll think it was a suicide note, and my friend Glenn Cooper was coming, and it would be very bad for his campaign to get mixed up with a suicide. So I tore up the note and flushed it down the toilet just as they walked in the room, and they're yelling at me, what happened, what happened? And before I could tell them what happened, I passed out on the bed. And that's the whole goddamn story. As sure as my name is Charlie Brock. <laughs> I buy it. I 
buy the whole thing. You know why I buy it? I buy it because I liked it. I didn't believe it, but I liked it. I love my wife too. And that's why I want to get home early. <laughs> Sorry to bother you folks. Uh, have a pleasant evening. Take care of that air, Mr. Brock, and have a happy anniversary. Crystal's angel. 